Our third session speaker is Georgia Azura Marson from NEC Labs Europe, who will be discussing mitosis, practically scaling permissioned blockchains. So I will hand over the floor now. Uh, yeah, thanks. So I'm presenting a joint work with my some uh, my colleagues from NEC Labs Europe, namely Sebastian Andreina, Konstantin Monichev, and Gassan Karame, as well as Lorenzo Aluminio, that was uh, that has been intern with us a few months ago. And yeah, so this work is in the context of scaling. Oops, sorry. <laughs> scaling permission blockchains and just to, I mean, reiterate on the motivation that uh, was already mentioned in Marquez's talk. Um, so there has been a lot of uh, effort in uh, towards improving the scalability of permissionless blockchains. And um, mainly this effort is continuous focus on um, improving the transaction throughput, which is uh, very small for currently deployed systems. Um, particular Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are the mostly widely adopted, uh, they offer about tens of transactions per second, while the centralized competitors like a Visa credit card uh, goes up to uh, 20, like, yeah, more than 20,000 transactions per second. So ideally, scalability for permission and systems um, would aim at improving transaction, getting closer to uh, decentralized systems. There has been many approaches um, in the context of permissionless blockchains, which are um, I mean, fall into the umbrella of layer one approaches and layer two approaches uh, on, the, uh, on the blockchain or consensus layer and on the smart contract layer. And so in, in our project, we focused on layer one approaches. And in particular, we, uh, we were inspired by, so partly at least, by blockchain sharding. However, our paper is focused, uh, our work is focused on um, scaling permission-based permission blockchains. And to give some motivation and position our work, I would like to look at the uh, advantages and disadvantages that permissionless and permissioned uh, systems provide. So first of all, from the decentralization perspective, of course, permission-based systems are uh, to some extent less decentralized or less open. Uh, this is not always a disadvantage because for, uh, for some applications, for example, for enterprise devel deployments, uh, it is actually desirable to have um, some limit to the participants of the system. So, and this is also why uh, we focus on, on permission systems. Uh, then looking at uh, scalability in the number of nodes, or, well, uh, permissionless systems have a big advantage because they can effectively enable any number of nodes uh, without harming uh, their performance. And in contrast, permission systems that uh, rely on classical consensus BFT or uh, BFT protocols, uh, due to the high communication, can only scale to um, um, yeah, very small systems below 100 of nodes, typically. On the other end, permissioned uh, blockchains offer very high throughput and low latency. They provide finality. And in this respect, they are much stronger than permissionless blockchains. So given this, um, we so if we look um, a little bit like at the at the old picture, and if we are happy with uh, sticking with permission-based blockchains, actually the only missing part is indeed the node scalability, and and this is effectively what we aim to do in our work. So my thesis, um, our proposal, um, precisely aims at um, providing higher scalability in terms of nodes uh, for permission-based blockchains. And um, basically the idea that the main, um, the picture that we envisioned initially is to provide a blockchain ecosystem where multiple uh, individual blockchains run simultaneously and autonomously. So they are independent of each other. And in particular, we would like our system to be dynamic in the sense that blockchains can be created and evolve uh, when it is uh, when when the time comes when it is actually necessary 
to, to change and flexible in the sense that each, um, each system, each subsystem or each blockchain would uh, be able to run its own consensus protocol. And so in a sense, this, this big system that uh, this is a high level system that we have in mind is very is similar to sharding because it also partitions the uh, transaction processing among the independent uh, set of nodes. However, um, sharding is more rigid um, because so first of all, all nodes are expected to run the same consensus protocol and shards have to be created um, once for all um, and so are not created dynamically. But this is the high level goal uh, of mitosis. Um, uh, and so we also, I mean, we don't want to just have isolated systems. So we also provide um, support for uh, cross-chain communication so that um, each node can talk to all the other nodes in principle and effectively the, so this makes sure that the system becomes an ecosystem uh, that is uh, where the blockchains are in, interconnected. So now going from the high level goal, um, I'd like to mention what is the effective difference with, uh, with blockchain sharding, I mean, beyond the fact that we look at permission-based systems. And uh, so, uh, here is the main component of, of our solution. Basically, the, the main innovation is the way, uh, the, is the mechanism that um, um, instructs when to shard or when to, to split the system. Um, this component we call uh, chain, uh, chain division, and it is reminiscent of the uh, biological process of cell division, and this is why uh, we named the system mitosis. So basically the idea is to let an existing blockchain to give birth to, uh, to, um, sub, uh, to new blockchains. Um, and this, um, so this process is triggered. Um, in the moment, a bottleneck in performance is reached. For example, when, um, when the set of nodes of the system, the consensus nodes become too large, which is effectively the reason for uh, decreasing performance in permission-based systems. So the main idea would be to, to let each blockchain evolve in a reactive way so that optimal performance can be met. Now again, uh, I'd like to give a, like, a closer look at the comparison between mitosis and sharding. So here you can see an illustration of how a blockchain in mitosis would evolve on the left. So if we start with a screenshot of, uh, of a given uh, set of validators of nodes, consensus nodes in my doses, so this would represent a chain. Um, and so at some point, this chain might be split into two, giving birth to new, to new blockchains with half of the nodes uh, uh, each. And then each of those individual blockchains might evolve and grow as more nodes join the system. And then again, regardlessly, when uh, each of these new blockchains grow and reaches a bottleneck, then we might invoke. So it might uh, decide to invoke chain division and uh, and then split again and keep splitting. And it is of course more dynamic than sharding in the sense that um, well, sharding sharding will just instruct the system to create uh, all the individual char shards in one go. So in a sense, our, our solution is a sort of dynamic sharding. So now coming to, to the security, which is uh, with the effectively the main, the focus of the rest of the talk, um, we observe the chain division clearly also opens to, uh, to some risks. Um, and well, the reason is that consensus protocols uh, can only tolerate a given number of faults and when we shard, it might happen that some of the faulty nodes um, the, in initial system, um, so I mean, of course, these nodes will be spread across the new the two blockchains. And even though the initial system is, um, um, is secure in the sense of preserving the consensus bounds, it might be that splitting will create an imbalance among the nodes in the child chains. And, and so as a consequence, one of the two chains might be um, might violate the consensus bounds. 
And so here in the example, you can see uh, a, system, a very small system just uh, for illustration, where we have initially 20 nodes, and six of those are, uh, are uh, we can assume that they are faulty. And then the system will be split into two shards of 10 nodes each. Um, and here, at my, this configuration on the right is problematic because uh, of the six nodes, four nodes end up in the first chain. And this violates the consensus bound in, in that chain. Given this issue, uh, we analyzed uh, formally the security of uh, this chain division process. And uh, for this, we followed uh, the following approach. So we, um, we considered a parameterized um, scenario where uh, we have, um, so we establish, we fix. Um, a maximum number of faults that are tolerated in the in the child chains. Uh, here in the example, I will just link to the standard Byzantine case where we have uh, at most one third uh, of uh, faulty nodes. And then based on this bound, we derive the conditions on the parent chain. So namely on the faults that we can tolerate on the parent chain so that splitting uh, is guaranteed to be secure. So we consider two cases. The first one is an optimistic case. It's uh, like it's very intuitive. Um, we essentially assume that the parent chain um, has um, at most the tolerated faults uh, in the in any of the two child chains. So again, here in the example, we assume standard Byzantine case with ten nodes in each child chain. So the maximum number of tolerated faults in the child chain is three. And as you can see in the illustration here, the parent chain has very few faults. So even in the worst case scenario where all the Byzantine nodes end up in one chain, here security of course is maintained. So in the general case, um, we uh, parameterized uh, the number of faults in this parent chain and we allow basically any number between the actual, uh, the maximum tolerated fault in the bigger system and in the smaller system. And we show then analytically uh, with which probability based on, uh, on the fault duration in the parent chain, we might end up in an unsafe configuration. Um, so I mean, in the paper, there, uh, we have a full analysis and I'm happy to explain that in more detail if you're interested. And yeah, to summarize, um, so our system, Idosis, is a, um, provides a novel approach to scale permission-based uh, blockchains via um, using chain division. And the goal is to provide a flexible and dynamic ecosystem that shards uh, reactively when the need arises. Um, so I, because of time, I didn't discuss, but in the paper, we also provide two cross-chain communication protocols for asset uh, transfer and for knowledge transfer. And we also discuss a proof of concept implementation based on our ledger fabric. And uh, yeah, here I'm adding the link to the paper and I would like to thank you for your attention.